We're asked to draw an entity to relationship diagram, or ER diagram, according to the following user requirements. We are going to be using this OneNote right here, but I also have it done inside of Lucidchart. So we have our River City Bank, and it needs to keep the following information for its database. The customer information is collected. So we know that we are going to have some kind of customer information. That means that we can say that our customer is going to be an entity. Now it's including their social security number, their name, and this goes to the first name and last name as well. It also has their phone number, that's an entity, and their address. Now when a person opens an account, the person becomes a customer of the bank. So a person's going to open an account, they are now a customer. And we can box this because this is still our entity. The bank database keeps track of account information, including account number. So when we have um, the bank database, the account part, we are going to have the information for this account. And this information, we don't really uh, need to circle it because that's just telling us about the account. We need the account number though, because it says account information, including the account number. Now, since it's unique right here, this is going to be a key. If it says it's unique, it is a key. We have our account balance. We have the type of an account. So this can be savings or checking. And then we have a monthly fee associated with this. And I'm going to dot this because it's going to be derived. Now that's going to be our customer and our also the account entity. Now, let's do this, and we'll come back and look at our results. So if we want this date, I'm thinking that we would pair it to the, not relationship, but to whatever we have on this side. And what we have on that side is, a customer is allowed to own many accounts. So this should be a many-to-many -many relationship. And that's what we're going to have in the middle right here. So when we have a relationship, it's going to be represented as a diamond. And we can put uses because, remember, we can have multiple customers using this account. And if it's many-to-many, -many, we are going to have uh, two lines. And that's not... And if it's many-to-many, -many, we'll have an N here and an M here. And then we can draw a line across here. We can draw a line across here. Now, is this partial or total participation? When a customer is a customer of the bank, when it says when a person owns an account, the person becomes a customer of the bank, I believe this is implying that once you are a customer, you have to have an account. So customer has to use the account. That is total participation here. And the account likewise has to be owned by at least one customer or many customers. It says any account must be owned by at least one customer. So that's my logic behind there. Now, a date when the customer starts to own the account is not when new customers are added. So when new customers are added, it goes to uses. That's why I would think that account number would go to our account. And we can see if we look up above a little bit, when a customer opens a new account, the date to open the account is the same date that the customer owned the account. So only on the day when it's open is it used. That's why I think that here is where we should have that attribute, the date that customer owns the account. Next we have that when a person has a loan with the bank, the person is also considered a customer of the bank. So we have our customer entity and from our customer, we can go to loan because that is what we're going to be looking at next. So next entity should be the loan. The ba bank database keeps track of the loan information. A loan, or entity, has a loan number unique. So this is going to be our key right here. The total amount of our loan, the loan type, and our interest rate. And I think the interest rate can be derived. So I'm going to underline circle that. A loan has a number of payments. And so our number of payments can be linked to another entity that we can think about as just payments. So payments is an entity. So that means our number 
of payments should be kind of like a relationship because each payment is going to have a payment number so that is going to be a key because it's unique with respect to each loan now if we don't have the loan we're not going to have any of this our payment would not exist without our loan so my thought is that payment is going to be a weak entity we have our amount as attribute we have our method of payment as an attribute and we have our status and due date a customer is allowed to borrow many times a loan can be borrowed by many customers at least one so this has to do with our relationship and we'll look at this and once we finish our entity diagram Now is where we're going to try to connect some things. So when we look at this, we know a customer is allowed to borrow many loans. So, so a customer is allowed to borrow many loans. They don't have to, but they can. So it's going to be total participation. A customer is allowed to. So this is going to go here and oh, single line because it's just partial and this is going to be many loans. Now, our customer doesn't need to have a loan. When it says a loan can be borrowed by a customer, so loan borrowed by a customer, it can be. That means this is going to be a many as well. But when it says at least one, it means that we are going to have total participation because if it's a customer and they are borrowing a loan, they have to have at least one if they're going this route. So this is going to be many as well. Next, we should connect our payment and loans. Now for above here, where we have our loan and our payments with the number of payments, we know that when we have a loan, we can have many payments because it says that a loan has a, a number of payments. I believe that it's implying that we are going to have multiple payments for this loan. So we can have the total participation here because each loan has to have a payment, right? So this is going to be many. Now for the loan to here though, we need to have total participation, but it's going to be one because the payments are going to be for this one loan. And the payment number of payments is for one loan. So that is how I would look at that. Next we have the bank keeps track of information of its branches. So branches we could say is an entity. Each branch has a branch name, which is unique. So that means that this would be a key and a address, which is another attribute. Each customer, so we're going from our branches to customer, has one favorite branch. And I'm thinking that this would be a relationship, right? Because it's a favorite branch. So this is a relationship and he, she visits most frequently. If a customer never goes to a branch, for example, only use online banking, then he or she does not have a favorite branch. So we can say the customer, which is going to be like this entity, goes to our favorite branch, and this is our actual branch. So the entity, which is customer, has a favorite branch. And while I'm looking at this, I should correct because I believe that this right here is incorrect. So when I was talking about it, a customer should be able to borrow loans, but it's not necessarily that they have to borrow a loan, right? Only if they borrow a loan do they have to be a customer. So I believe the two lines should be right here, and then there should be one line right here, because a customer is not forced to borrow a loan, but if someone does borrow a loan, they become, they have to become, part of total participation, a customer. Anyways though, back to what we were doing. So each customer has one favorite branch. And if we narrow this down to be a little bit better, just favorite should be our relationship because branch is already by itself. So if we read this, we have the customer has a favorite branch that's one. And this branch doesn't necessarily have to be a favorite. That's why we have partial participation here. And the customer doesn't 
have to have a favorite branch, which is why we have partial participation here as well. Now, this branch can be a favorite of many customers, so on the other side, we could just put N here. And now, we can draw this out. And that's going to be all for our diagram. And I believe I did it correctly. Some of this is a little bit of interpretation, I believe. But now, this is what I have on the Lucid chart. So it's very similar to what we have below. If there's any mistakes, gotta let me know, because I'm slightly unsure. But that's how I did it on Lucid chart. And this is how I just quickly did it in the OneNote with the instructions. I made a few simple changes here, the f mostly with the relationships. I'm pretty certain on everything else, it's just the relationships I'm having issue with. So we've talked about them previously and I've made some changes. So we have customer uses account. Now I've changed this from total participation to partial participation um, because we don't have to have a customer since a person who's taking a loan is a customer. The instructions don't say that this customer needs to use an account. So partial participation because just because you're a customer it doesn't mean that you have an account. Now a customer has the many favorite branches. I changed this as well because um, a customer doesn't have to have a favorite branch. So that's why it's only not the total participation but a partial participation here. But these branches that are favorites, they must be a favorite of the customer. So that's my logic there. You can interpret this many ways from what I've seen, but just based off the instructions, but that's what I have for this so far.